your butthole will work over this. Like you can do it. You can do it. Happy two month anniversary, weirdos. As you can see, I have gone through all kinds of lengths to gussy this bitch up. I did not make the bed, mostly because now that it is 90 degrees here in Texas, every single night I just sweat through everything and then I leave it crumpled up like that uh, so that it can dry off. Doesn't that sound sexy? So sexy that you just wanna like get up there with your ass cheek showing and take that most predictable picture on Instagram. I'm not doing that. I am disgusting and I'm going to hop in the shower soon. This is my first night at a state park. Uh, which they're expensive. I know I got a lot of flack from people saying, I don't know why you stay in RV parks, you should stay in state parks. Well, because it's like seven to ten dollars entry fee and then another 20 bucks for the spot. And as an isolated incident, that's not a lot of money. But over time, if you're on the road for a long time, van life, that adds up. That's actually pretty damn pricey. However, I have lost the battle in chasing 70 degrees. The whole trip was designed so that I would get to 70 degrees during the day and 50 degrees at night. That is the perfect temperature match for being in a van. And I lost. It was 40 degrees when I arrived in Galveston and it is now in the 90s. And I deeply, deeply, deeply regret not putting in a window. I know I've already said this, I'm reiterating it or putting in a second vent or fan because there is just no way for the heat to get up out of this piece. So it's just, it is what it is and hopefully I can correct it soon, but by the time I get home to correct it, it will be fall. So anyway, we're gonna do what we did last time at the one month anniversary, which is I've got a lot of your questions and comments and we're gonna go through everything that's working and not working and hopefully those of you who are about to start this process will learn something and I will also address the bullshittery that I get sometimes in the comment section, uh, which we are not following for that crap, and we will iron that all out. So, okay, let's talk about temperature first. Oh, and there's no order to this. It's just gonna be a confetti of comments coming at you. Um, heating the van is not hard. Cooling it down sucks, especially if you are in the deep, deep south. Uh, over 90 and close to 100% humidity. It's disgusting. It's wretched. Um, heating, I think um, Cheap RV Living, Bob, who we all worship the ground, Bob walks on. Bob talks about just taking your propane stove and turning it on, like make a cup of tea, cup of hot chocolate, turn that bitch on, and that will heat your van fine. And in closed space, you are not gonna have any issue quickly heating the van. Cooling it down, oh my God. And you can't like, leave these doors open for long amounts of time for safety. I mean, every Walmart parking lot I go into, there's always other van people and there's always RVers. And I go over there and I'm like, hey guys, what if we like circle up our vans like the Cowboys did back in the Wild West? And like, then we can have this protected inner circle and like have fresh air and nobody's hearing it. So maybe they've watched my videos and think I'm an asshole. Reasonable, but. We should work together on that one, whether or not I'm an asshole. Anyway, that said, one of the questions I got was about insulation and would I have insulated the van the same? Here's the thing. At the end of the day, you're still sleeping in your car. So I would not go through nearly the lengths that I went through to, I mean, I was getting like every little detail. Cars are designed to have holes and vents all over them. And you're never gonna get every single one. I do think it helps to some degree, but it still gets cold as hell in here and it still gets hot as hell in here. So I would not obsess about it maybe as much as I did. I met a woman this morning who lives in her van. No insulation whatsoever. She just said, I've just come to accept that it's gonna be hot in here, it's gonna be cold in here, and I don't think insulation is gonna change all that. Especially since you've got the cab, you know, big windows. Every time you open this huge sliding door, you're just the whole temperature and climate in here changes. And she may be right. So if I was doing it all over again, I probably would not spend two weeks cutting out every teeny tiny piece of foam board. I probably would spray it 
and deliberately not get every single corner because the problem if you encase something in spray foam and don't give any ventilation is that there's also no way for moisture to escape. That's why with a lot of these new home constructions, older houses don't have these issues with mold because the house can breathe, the wood can breathe. New construction, they seal them tight with that spray foam and moisture that's in cannot get out. Plus, you know, oh God, the vapor barrier thing. How many comments did I get about, I can't believe you didn't put a vapor barrier in. Vapor, bar that tells me you know absolutely nothing about construction because vapor barriers on a house are done with seams and they have to be flush with the surface and there can be no interruption of the seam. Well, good luck finding a flush surface in a van. You know what, I'll just, I'll just stand here and wait while you go find the flush surface in a van. Get my point? Okay. Get over it. I, I mean, you want to put a vapor barrier in? Fine. Put a vapor barrier in and tell me all about it when it still doesn't make a difference. Okay, moving on. In the last big update video I did, I was at the Shady RV Park. Now I'm at a state park in Texas. It is very expensive, but my God, is it nice. Texans really care about their outdoors. I mean, it's got beautiful bathrooms. They're spotless. They're clean. There's places to fill up your water jugs. The people here are super duper nice. It's beautiful. Uh, this is just night and day, and that only speaks to the variability of campsites. Now, when I posted that last video, people were like, well, do you not know how to read reviews on the internet? Yes, dumbass, I know how to read reviews on the internet. The problem is a lot of those reviews are written by RVers. Well, RVers have their own bathrooms, their own showers, and they tend to not use the facilities that van people do. So you're looking at a review that isn't necessarily written to what you're going to experience in the RV park. I mean, none of the RVs that were in the shady RV park were getting out and using the public bathroom. I was. So your needs are different. We need like a whole site to review RV parks for van people, okay? Someone write that down, that's a good idea. Anyway, and, and also in that video, somehow the solar evangelist came out in that video. I, it, what is it with you people? Like. Any problem I have in the van, somehow y'all make it about the fact that I didn't get solar and that's why I have the problem. You're like the chiropractors of the energy world. You relating two things that are not even like mildly corroborated and, and joining them together to come up with a solution that actually doesn't make any sense. Like you go to the chiropractor and you could say, hey, I've been running a lot and like my meniscus hurts and like, can you, what do you think about that? And they'll say, oh, well the problem's in your earlobe. Yeah, just, just lay down, I'm gonna walk on your earlobe. Like we're gonna crack your earlobe, that's the problem with your knee. No, I think, I think the problem is with my knee. And solar is the same thing. Everything I say that's a problem on the van, they're like, oh, if you'd gotten solar, you wouldn't have to stay in an RV park. No, that doesn't make any sense because the benefits of the RV park, ugh, the benefits of the RV parks and the campsites are that I have shore power, which means every single plug in here works. I can charge all my gear. I have unlimited power. I have air conditioning. Look at this. Watch this. Yeah. Beautiful thing beautiful thing to have air conditioner in the deep south and anyone who's in the deep south knows that so you've got shore power you can get unlimited water you can do your laundry allegedly it's safe enough to leave your door open I mean that's why I stayed in RV parks once a week it has nothing to do with solar furthermore I have had some people actually try to pick a fight with me in the comment section that you can run an AC unit on solar power Bullshit. I, I'm not saying that maybe if you had a Tesla battery, you might be able to pull it off, but like, who the hell has a Tesla battery? Maybe, maybe with like a heavy duty setup, you could start an air conditioner, but this, the Mach 3 Power Saver, is one of the most uh, energy efficient and low wattage AC units out there. It has a starting of like 1600 watts and then a running of 1000 watts. So maybe you could start an air conditioner with your solar bank, but tell me, now just tell me, 
how long can you run it? What's going to happen is those solar batteries, your panels, the batteries they're charging, they are going to get zapped with how much power that thing needs. And every time I start asking someone questions about running an air conditioner on solar, they get really quiet. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because they're full of shit. Look, if I'm wrong, somebody just show it to me. If you have got a solar system and you can run air conditioner all night long, I'll buy five. <laughs> okay? I'm just... I just don't think it exists, that's all. And furthermore, on the topic of solar, now that I'm hot, sweaty, swamp ass, and irritated that I'm still talking about this and still have to defend my choices, there's no other product out there that has like an 18 to what, 25% conversion or efficiency rate that people will spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to purchase. Like if I told you that the plane only takes off 20% of the time, you're not getting up there. If I told you that the uh, gasoline in your car, only 20% of it is gonna work, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't buy that, no. Solar has attracted sheep mentality. And I think that it's a really cool thing for powering your lights and maybe powering up your electronics. But folks, just if you're gonna go through the whole work to do this, Please just think about where do I live, where am I going, what is the climate in both, and how am I comfortable at home? And if, if the answer is that you use a lot of power and you like air conditioning, then I, all I hope is that you just give some thought into what your energy demands actually are and whether or not solar can sustain that. Not just start it, sustain it. And I'm done talking about solar for today because I can feel my swamp ass getting worse just talking about this topic. Leave me alone, solar evangelist. Go bother soy boy man bun. The, the biggest thing that I'm now realizing at the two month mark is that the shower is the limiting agent. The shower is the hardest thing to find for free compared to anything else. I can find water, no problem. Water is not an issue. I can find places to park, no problem. That's not an issue. But getting a shower is like a real pain in the ass. For that reason, and this is, I'm just gonna say this at the two month mark, I may change my mind at the three month mark. If I was doing this all over again, I would go for the 3500 even though it does jut out and is bigger and it's not gonna it's gonna cost more in fuel and da 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 but if you could put some kind of shower system in the van maybe you don't use it every single day but just to have that option would be really nice because every day I have to find a shower and it just it takes up a lot of time it causes me to park at any time fitness or another gym all the time and I don't always want to sleep in a parking lot so that is the biggest hang-up is the shower if you can figure that out awesome now I know I know because I have been on the YouTubes that uh, you know, Vegan Veronica and Cleavage Caitlin all have these videos, which of course they're, they're turned this way so you can see their ass cheeks. Like that's the whole point. That's the icon of the video. And they're, they're taking a sun shower. They've got like the bag. This is hot. I'm not, I, I need to finish this video so I can turn the AC back on. But back there on the back door, they have some, one of those sun shower bags. And, uh, where are you going to do that? If you're doing it in a campground, campgrounds have showers. You're not doing that in a parking lot. So like, where was that picture taken? And furthermore, why are there never any suds in their hair? Like, how is it that Cleavage Caitlin has magical soapless soap? Have you ever seen a woman take a shower, boys? I'm like, it is, it is, t like there are fewer steps that were probably involved in in getting El Chapo arrested than there are in a woman taking a shower. Like we go through all these layers. There's like when you put in the conditioner, how long you leave it on, then you got a shower, you got to wash your face. We've got different soaps for every part of our body. Like how is she just standing under a dribble of water and that's working for her? Bullshit. I don't believe that. I everybody's different, but I need a real shower. I need like like actual water and I need showers are just 
It's more than just getting clean because women do something in a shower that men don't do. They think. We use that time, that whole however long we're in there, to think about what pissed us off yesterday, anticipate what we're going to say to that bitch in the office, we cry in the shower, some of us sing in the shower. The shower is a sacred place, okay? So a bag on the back of this van is not going to do it for me. I need a real shower. So it, for those reasons, I would probably opt for the 3500 which would give me enough room to put in a small shower in this van and I probably would not leave the water tank full but rather fill it up based on when I needed it. Just something to think about if you're like me and you do all your best thinking in the shower and best revenge plotting in the shower, you may want to get the bigger version and go for it. But that's up to you. Cleavage Caitlin can tell you more about how to take a shower without any fucking soap. Just like last time, we'll go front to back. Uh, in the front of the van, I forgot two little tips uh, that I need to mention. One, all the way up here, and I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but I bought a phony car alarm. It's solar powered. Oh my God, I have solar in the van. Uh, that is the only thing that's solar powered and it charges itself and it blinks that little blue light that looks like a car alarm. I did it strictly as a deterrent. It was $8 on Amazon. Just like I've done in all the other videos, I'll put links to everything that I'm still using and would still recommend so that you don't have to go hunt for it. My van people, my people who are not doing this just yet, it is a responsibility from morning until night to manage the temperature back here. It, you have to think about it. How am I going to keep this cool or how am I going to keep it warm? And dealing with that front windshade is a very, very big part of temperature control back here. How you want to sleep at night depends on how you act in the morning. Got it? All right, let's talk about the kitchen. The kitchen that I've clearly been scrubbing day and night to get ready for this video. I just can't stand those stage photos. It's just so fake. Like, when I see table decorations on the kitchen of a van conversion like <laughs> are, are you kidding me you have tulips in a vase fuck you you do you, you do you move that van like table decorations all that stuff some predictable pillow that says home is where you park it just stop it's like it's you live in this like it's gonna get dirty i'm only telling you that not to like totally rag on van people, although I'm totally ragging on van people, but just please don't think that once you get in a van, it's just going to be some like mythical fairy tale of scented candles and ukuleles because it's, it's just like home. It gets dirty. It's, it's fine. You're here to not be in the van. You're here to go out there and sweat and exercise and, and be in the sunshine and like do cool shit. So just, put the tulips away okay <laughs> anyway i have a seven gallon water tank and i was so worried that that was not going to be enough i was like no i need 35. i have never run out of water except for that time that i got stuck in the sand and that was my fault because i assumed that there would be a town before the beach and there wasn't and i ran through all my water and that was pretty scary uh not as scary as getting stuck in the sand but pretty damn close Anyway, I've never needed more than seven gallons. If you're bringing your man bun, better half, and your shelter dog Guinness with you, you might need more. But every time I go grocery shopping or stay at a park or city parks, there's water everywhere. Water is very easy to find. I just have a couple, I don't know where they are right now. Anyway, I have a couple water jugs and I fill them up and replace the water in the sink and always make sure that it's topped off. Never been an issue. So I tell you that so you don't feel like you need to bring a huge water tank and carry it because every gallon of water is eight pounds. So if you are bringing a huge tank, you're adding a whole lot of weight to your van. Um, also try to think of ways to multi-purpose when you're in your van. So I got rid of the microwave. High five YouTuber Stephanie for buying that thing. I hated that microwave. I use a microwave every day in the house. I've never used it in a van. It was just big and bulky and like taking up space. The only thing that I have to cook with in here is the propane stove. And there's just, just think a little bit ahead so you don't have hot water in a van. But every morning I make a cup of tea. You may make hot chocolate or 
don't know, coffee, whatever else. I mean, a lot of van people somehow fit designer espresso machines in their van. So uh, if you're as realistic as they are, then you'll have hot water there. Anyway, once you boil the water, have hot water for whatever it is you drink in the morning, then use that to sterilize your toothbrush, to do your dishes, if you want warm water on your face. You just kind of will start to learn um, how to you know, do two things at one time uh, and not waste water because while it is in ample supply, it is a pain in the ass carrying around your water jug every single where place you go in the hunt for clean water in the cabinet that houses the sink and the water tanks this area gets wet a lot because I'm carrying water bottles to fill up the sink just splashing around um, this underneath here underneath the sink base this tends to get wet and that's not a big deal because these are solid wood cabinets and I monitor it and dry it off pretty frequently however I have seen some van channels and I almost considered it where they get Ikea cabinets because Ikea cabinets are dirt cheap well they're dirt cheap because they're made with something called MDF and medium density fiberboard I'm pretty sure that's it which is basically sawdust and adhesive that's pressed at very high heats and is shaped into boards it's easy to cut it looks fine once you paint it but it's glorified cardboard okay so if MDF ever gets wet it swells it's absorptive and it's done there is no bringing that back once it's wet so if you put IKEA cabinets in your van conversion I hope to God that you're not doing dishes or anything else because these are constantly getting wet it's constantly wet under here and that amount of moisture and just direct contact with water I my they would have been destroyed a long time ago so I would heavily caution you as cheap as they are it is not worth it in the long run to get IKEA cabinets aim for hardwood I talked about this a little bit in uh, the last video about the myth of van life being cheap and inexpensive it is not cheap at all and food costs is one thing that I've been surprised has been significantly more than what I would spend at home and I couldn't figure out why that was because I'm not eating really anything hugely different I'm not eating more um, I do have to grocery shop every day or every two days and what I figured out is at home uh, I buy in bulk, so I buy at Costco or Sam's Club, or I'm able to buy like the bigger bags of frozen vegetables or the bigger bags of frozen fruit and extend that throughout the week. Well, because you've got your little fridge and you don't have a lot of space, um, you have to buy things smaller and anything smaller that's more packaging or that's pre-prepped for you is more expensive. So I've just been blown away how much higher my food costs are. I've not eaten in two months a single meal out. No fast food, no drive throughs no restaurants, no nothing. And a big part of that is is because I'm trying to keep my costs down. Uh, it would make my life so much easier to be able to just pull in somewhere and get a sandwich. The other reason is, is because I'm beyond grateful. I don't even know what words to use for my Patreon people and people that support this channel on PayPal. I, I can't thank you all enough. I really can't. I would not be here, you know, despite the challenges. Um, this trip would have been done a long time ago. So I take it very seriously to be a good steward of the money that they are donating to be a part of this experience. And if I was blowing 20 bucks a night or 30 bucks a day on snacks and meals out and other things, then I don't think that's fair to them. And that would certainly not be very responsible of me. So I take that money, it goes to either put gas in the tank buy groceries or buy admission to things that I think would be good stories to share on the channel. So I'm, I'm very adamant about, again, being a good steward of that money. If you think you're going to get in a van and eat out every day, I just, I hope that your trust fund is, is well uh, stocked because it just is going to get very expensive. Add up the gas, add up the meals out, add up going and plugging in at parking or campsites and RV parks and missions to things. It's not a cheap way to live. Um, so just 
something to consider. Uh, and the other thing that's been kind of funny in a learning experience is that when I did the kitchen tour when I was building it, we were all, I mean, I was doing it too, making fun of these plates, these little plastic plates. And I said on the video, I said, you know, I don't know how long these are going to last me because they're so tiny. And I actually highly, highly recommend these. And here's why. Because one, they're light. They're not going to break. They add no weight to the van. But two, when you are actually cooking in a van, when you're prepping a meal, a, a full-size dinner plate, like, you just don't have the room. So I have learned to love these and embrace them. Um, since they're smaller, I can give myself more servings of these, and then I feel like a queen. Um, but this, I... I really, really, really recommend these because they just take up less space, they give you more room, and cleaning a full dinner plate in a smaller sink is not actually that easy. I mean, I have a pretty small pot and that thing's a pain in the ass. So these are a breeze to just scrub off and dry off. And again, no weight, wonderful. I love them, I would get them and I would recommend them. Somebody asked me if I would, or, or no, not if I would, why haven't I gotten one of those $100 um, washing machines, the portable ones. Um, I haven't gotten one because they're crap. If you know anybody who has one, you will spend three hours running back and forth to get water and rinse and dump and rinse and dump your whole day will be using that thing. I am fully aware that van channels, other van channels, like those and suggest them. And uh, here's a little insight into something that you should consider when whether or not you want to take someone's advice. When you start to get around the 10,000 subscriber mark, which high five, we just hit, companies then decide that since you've already busted your ass to do all the work and get the audience that uh, they'll pay you to recommend things, which is not inherently bad or wrong. And my God, would I love to have the money. The problem is, is if you just take the money and it's not a product you use, like, or is good for other people. Every single thing, now this is uh, the reporter in me talking, but my reputation is not worth a couple hundred bucks. So if I recommend it, it's because I use the damn thing and I would suggest it to someone I care about. Uh, and I've turned down a couple of things now. It's not to say that I won't accept some kind of product endorsement down the line, but it's going to be something that I use. That I can promise you. But I noticed that like uh, more than a few of them are just speak wonders about this thing that people I know who actually have one say are terrible. So uh, just consider that there may be like some kind of sponsorship or product endorsement there. Uh, go online and actually read the reviews of people using those. I've never met someone ever who would recommend one of those. If you know anything about how a real washing machine is designed, you know that there's no way to simplify that process. You need a washing machine. Wi-Fi is still a pain in the ass. Verizon continues to throttle my data usage. I don't have a ton of control over that. Uh, well, obviously use less data, but good luck when you get on the road and you're using maps and you're editing video and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, a great Wi-Fi spot, if you don't want to go in and buy coffee, is a public library. Just park outside the public library. Most of them have repeaters that circle the signal around the entire building, so it goes outside. And I've had many nice evenings sitting in the van with the door open, because libraries are usually safe, and just drafting off their signal, it works 99% of the time unless they have a code. So that I really enjoy. And then let's talk about our favorite thing in the Bay bus, Lay Shitter. There she is. She's not active right now, like kind of an inactive volcano. Women seem to be the most hung up about Lay Shitter, and like in a funny way. Um, it's, it's the most famous part of this van. She is, one day there will be a museum and it will be up there with like one of those historic plaques. <laughs> anyway, I got, I've gotten a couple messages from women who are just like beside themselves on how to handle the bathroom thing. Ladies, 
you have you are gonna have so much to worry about and so much to do this is really like the least of your worries it's gonna be weird for like the first two nights and then you'll get over it i had one woman who said like every morning like she has to poop and like she has to go and she just can't imagine doing it in the van and like your butthole will work over this like you can do it you can do it men don't get hung up about this my guy friends they have taken pictures of the turd that they just pinched that blocked up the whole office toilet and like sent it to their other guy friends because they're so proud like i don't know what it is about women and like we try to act like we don't poop like or that we just sparkle out of our hands it's you made that be proud of it. That's like your daily Pinterest project that you just, no effort. <laughs> okay, like, honestly, I know that it seems just horrid to so many women, but it's not that big of a deal. Just do the thing, tie up the bag, and toss it in a dumpster or somewhere else. Like, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you're going to have to, the issue that you're having is that you don't want to be anywhere near your waist. And I'm sorry, but that's just a part of van life is you're, you're closer to all of your, the resources that you use than you ever were before. Um, you're going to have to deal with it one way or another. It's unrealistic that you're going to run into a public restroom at three o'clock in the morning. So if you get a compost toilet, you're not going to have any room for it. But anyway, you're still going to have to dump it out. If you get a cassette toilet where it like collects in a plastic bin, then you're going to have to take your turd in a Tupperware to a public restroom and dump it out. And it, it's one way or another, you're going to have to do this. And when you got to go, you got to go. Going to the bathroom is the greatest leveler of all society. Like no matter what race, what gender, what socioeconomic background, when you have to poop, you have to poop. It's the same across all people. Okay. It's not a big deal. Just go poop. <laughs> Just do it. It's fine. Oh my goodness. The emails are hilarious, but really like it's it's not a big deal um and then the last thing i'll say about the shitter and i about spit my earl gray earl gray tea out across the room uh across the van when i read this but the last big kind of update video i did i was talking about you know that rv parks are grassy lands filled with divorced men and it's a safety issue. It's kind of freaky. And I, I hope whoever said this will reveal themselves because you deserve all the credit in the world. But the security tip that this YouTuber gave me was that if another guy comes to the van and I can see what's about to happen, that I should just right at the, let me this, you know, right here at the door, where they always come up on this side, just hold up lay shitter maintain eye contact straight face and as they get close hold up lay shitter and say i shit in this and then put it down and slowly close the van door without breaking eye contact and i about peed in my pants i thought that was so funny because i would totally do it but i'd only do it if there was someone else on the other side of the van to get video of the reaction shot I don't think they'd come back still offering great value ice cream if I said that. That is an excellent tip. The other tip I got after that video, some guy wrote, this is why you need a dog, sweetheart. Well, thanks, sugar tits, except I don't want a dog in here because when it's raining outside, shelter dog Guinness is still going to have to go pee, and then soggy, wet shelter dog Guinness is going to be inside of this van with me. I don't know how anybody brings a pet into a van, uh, but I would never bring an animal in here. It's not fair to them if I'm out all day playing a dog, cat, gerbil, you know, chinchilla, sugar squirrel, or sugar glider, whatever the hell it is that you've got. It's not fair to them to be in here. And especially when it's hot, it's not fair to them. So that is everything that's been going on for the past two months. I've got all kinds of uh, little videos that I'm going to have coming at you. And we are now making our way, we, me, uh, up north because I have got to get out of this heat. It really is unbearable. And Detroit is calling. I'm coming to see all my buddies in Detroit. Anyway, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to wash my ass because it's sweaty. And I will see you all in the next video.